गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग आई जस्ट वेट begin now uh, namaskaram and good evening to everyone thank you so much for joining us for logging in at a time <laughs> uh, in which there is such a profusion of uh, artistic activity online it's lovely that you've joined us i am most thrilled to be part of this very inter- very lovely initiative of roading with women by ala uh, where we look at voices unheard women who's uh, who've been relegated to the margins uh, in art in literature um as a way to celebrate the sacred feminine uh, in this navaratri period we've heard several beautiful stories lovely musical presentations over the last week and um, it is my honor to also be a part of this and add to this Uh, to the collection of and collective of voices that uh, we are trying to pay more attention to and bring to the limelight uh, having said that of course i'm i'm but uh, i'm no one <laughs> to talk about uh, bringing this this extraordinary woman uh, in the limelight because uh, i'm i mean what i'd like to do is give you a, give you some glimpses uh, of the life of a really remarkable woman tarigonda vengamamba tarigonda vengamamba is um not just a composer not just a saint poetess not just someone who's um contributed to the body of musical work that we're able to dip into today i think she was truly extraordinary because of the kind of life she lived and i think she lived a life of example she was someone who was uh, who was born and who lived in the 18th century in the 1700s and even then she's i mean at a time in which i think women were subjugated and lived lives of oppression she truly lived uh, a life on her own terms she truly lived a life of defiance and um, she sort of blazed her own trail and uh, followed it throughout her life uh, i want to so she was born in um, a very small village of tarikonda in tarikunda in um, uh, chittur district in andhra pradesh to very to a very very humble uh, background mm, but someone who rose to fame and uh, renown because of her uh, literary and uh, her literary ability so she was i mean as was the case with most young uh, women at the time vengamamba was actually married off very young at the age of 10 or 11 uh, but she was also widowed very very young very soon after and one of the first uh, one of the first acts of defiance that she showed the world was that she refused to bear the customary marks of a widow she refused to Uh, shape her head she refused to wear white she refused to let go of her mangal sutra and she did this she said because she did i mean on the one hand she did it because she said she was only committed to the lord and to no other man and on the other hand i think it is a very very uh, radically feminist act to not to choose not to give up uh, these marks of being married so vengamamba at a very young age itself not only devoted herself to the lord but was also someone who was very very interested in intellectual pursuit she is someone who wanted to study and wanted to learn so she learned uh, the yoga sutra she learned sanskrit she learned uh, all about the puranas and itihasa she was someone who uh, who devoured knowledge at a time in which women this was not the prerogative of women in which men were the custodians of such knowledge and of such uh, intellectual and intellectual pursuits so even at that young age what vengamamba did was that she educated herself 
and uh, she i mean she was not someone who got had it easy either i mean she was hounded because she was a woman um she was hounded by the men in her village by the priests in her village uh, by people who believed that by shunning social norms defying social norms she was doing something horribly wrong and she actually fled to tirumala where she lived um, in the company of her favorite god venkateshwara i'd like to sing um a verse from one of her compositions one of one of her many verses just to tell you what kind of a woman she is yes she like meera she like several other uh, women speak about being devoted to god speak about being um speak about surrendering to god but her tone is very different and i'll tell you about it after i sing this but for you so you know she's not submissive she's not someone who says oh please i mean i'm i'm i want no one to enter my dreams but for you but she says she puts the responsibility on to god himself she says so she's a self assured woman she is um uh, you know a bold woman defiant and she enjoys equal status with the god he is an equal he's a partner and she says she's not submissive at all she says you ensure that no one enters comes into my dream except but for you um vengamamba was also someone who you know because she like i said she was someone who uh, was very who was very intellect who wrote a lot of intellectually stimulating work she was very well trained she um, <clears throat> was very well educated and she was actually such an evolved soul that she saw beyond form and shape she never really approved of this of the very divisive understanding of religion and god that we continue to have today she says there is one universal godhead you can call him shiva or you can call him keshava but he is one and the same and this is she says i mean what is the difference between these two people does anyone worth his salt does anyone who is intelligent at all how can they not perceive that there is actually no difference and she says you know you're all in a state of intoxication in which the truth is blurry you don't really know what you're seeing and you're not able to 
see you're not bold enough decisive enough or patient enough really to explore the truth and to realize the truth and the truth is that god is one the truth is that this body and this existence is ephemeral is transient okay and what we know is only worldly and sensual pleasures but the ultimate truth the essence is one and is only one she says somude narasimha namudattadai aa mahadevude achutudai shri mahavishnuve shivarupamai Yes, as Harini, absolutely. It's also so relevant. I mean, these are. This is a theme that I think holds relevance, currency even today. She says there is only one God. What is you know? And this was a time she was writing at a time in which there was these factions of Hindu, of Shaivites and Vaishnavites, and there was a war um, between of, of ideologies. This particular um, so Venkamamba, in fact, also forayed into the realm of the esoteric. Um, again, uh, something that was. only the prerogative of men at the time you know writing <clears throat> not just intellectual content but metaphysical content and um vengamamba writes about the venunadam the sound of the flute and she doesn't talk of it merely as lyrical or sweet or ethereal or magnificent as other writers have written about she's not she as you know she moves beyond the superficial you know and she says the venunadam that enchants the three worlds that enlightens us that that is so sweet and beautiful is actually that which enlightens that which is the path to salvation and she says ultimately the venunadam is the omkara the pranavanadam and the venunadam
Adam is the universal, all-pervading, primal sound of the cosmos. It is what sustains our breath. It is our life force. So the Vedu Nadam is the same as the life force. It is that. It and there is so therefore no difference between the Vedu Nadam and us. In a way, she is saying it is in all of us and representative of um, the Advaita philosophy of non-duality, which is so interesting. Again, this is a, a time in which women did not have um, the chance, the opportunity, or um, the wherewithal really to delve into the metaphysical because it was the men who were privy to knowledge uh, at all it's which itself is a prerequisite to understanding the metaphysical and the spiritual and uh, it's so interesting she says pranavana venunadam is equal to pranavanadam venunadam is not just a sweet sound which enchants us but it is that which sustains us which is a very life force <clears throat> and she moved to Tirumala and here too she faced uh, banishment, she faced insults she, because she was a woman and she was a widow and the priests as all priests are, I think, want to do <laughs> over the act, they didn't quite like her 
uh, coming and uh, offering her prayers at the feet of the Lord. And so she was also shunned. She was asked not to enter the temple precincts, not to enter the sanctum sanctorum. And I think she converted all of that into the most exquisite poetry and literature. I mean, she's written Yakshagana, she's written, so she's written dance ballet, she's written, uh, you know, Kavya, she's written, her, she has written prolifically. Um, so this is someone who converted all of that into her artistic, into artistic and uh, literary uh, greatness. And uh, time is sort of, we're running out of time, but I do want to quickly share uh, a small incident which is of course it, it's low but it's something that I like because this, there's a little mischief in it and it's so interesting. Uh, so it is said that when she lived in Tirumala, the Lord used to visit her every night and uh, they, you know they used to spend all night talking about uh, her poetry and her literature and uh, bantering and, and, and having a wonderful time and before dawn broke he rushed back to the Sanctum Sanctorum and um, on one particular day, they were so engrossed in their conversation and in their exchange that he didn't quite realize and he suddenly heard the Suprabhatam from the temple and he suddenly realized, oh my God, you know, uh, the sun has risen and uh, even even God is scared of the Pujaris and he said, oh my God, the Pujaris are going to see that I'm not in the Garbhagraha. And so he has to rush and so what he does is he sort of, he tears himself away from Vengamamba's grip and he rushes. And what happens is he leaves a little bit of his uttariya behind in Vengamamba's hand. And uh, when the priests open the door of the Sanctum Sanctorum, they are appalled. I mean, it's quite easy, I think, to uh, shock priests, but priests are appalled because they said, they say, oh my goodness, why is only a little part of his uttariya on him? And because it's, 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 you know, ripped apart and they're horrified. And they finally trace the Uttariya back to her house and uh, they sort of eat humble pie. They realize that this is someone who, of course, you know, someone who has been, uh, sorry, someone who is in, uh, not only has deep love for the God, but whom the Lord also respects. And it is, I think, a moment of vindication for me and for other women to know that firstly, the Lord treated her as an equal and secondly, that the priests finally had, all the priests who shunned her and banished her and exiled her had to finally uh, bow down to her and say, yes, you are truly, um, you know, one of, uh, you are truly someone who is deserving of, the, of entering the temple and of being with the Lord. And it is said, and it, she, I, I'll end with um, the Mangala Harati that she has written. And this particular, uh, this Mangala Harati, in fact, is sung even today during Ekanta Seva at Tirumala. And it's not great because it continues to be performed in a live temple, but I think it is great because of the content. And it is so beautiful, I think only a woman really could have written with such sensitivity and such empathy. She doesn't, it's like a vote of thanks. So she doesn't only say thank you to the Lord and thank you to Alameda Manga and thank you to the priests, but she also says thank you to all, she says thank you to the Madhavitus, thank you to the chariots, thank you to the umbrellas, thank you to uh, the, the storehouses and the granaries, thank you, she says, to, um, you know, the people, the, uh, the Gopuras, thank you to like the chariots and the charioteers. So she, it's so wonderful because she is offering thanks not only to animate objects but also to all inanimate beings which are allowing for us to partake of the worship of the Lord. And like I said, I think it takes a woman to see, to, to be so sensitive about it and also to really um, be aware of the centrality of synergetic interdependent relationships in our lives. If we don't build and cultivate synergy with other people and other objects, it's impossible to get work done. And she so beautifully uh, talks about it. She, you know, she thanks the gardens. She thanks, uh, like I said, the storehouses, the granaries. She thanks uh, everybody. She thanks the whole, the, even the umbrellas that the Lord is taken out under when he goes in procession. And this particular Mangala Harati continues to be performed today. So I will... And um, I will end with this particular thing. Thank you, Ala, for, uh, for this opportunity, and thank you all for listening. <coughs> mm.
ಜಯ ಮಂಗಳ ನಿತ್ಯ ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಳ ನಿತ್ಯ ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳ ಶ್ರೀ ಪನ್ನಗಾದ್ರಿವರ ಶಿಖರ ಗ್ರವಾಸುನ ಕುಪಾಪಾಂಧಕಾರ ಧನ್ ಭಾಸ್ಕರು ಅಪರಾತ್ ಪರ ನಿತ್ಯಾನ ಪಾಯಿ ನೈನ ಮಾಂ ಪಾಲಿಯಲ ಮೇಲು ಮಂಗಮ್ಮ ಕೂ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಳ ನಿತ್ಯ ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಳ ನಿತ್ಯ ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳ ಶ್ರೀ ಪನ್ನಗಾದ್ರಿವರ ಶಿಖರ ಗ್ರವಾಸುನ ಕುಪಾಪಾಂಧಕಾರ ಧನ ಭಾಸ್ಕರು ನೂ ಅಪರಾತ್ ಪರ ನಿತ್ಯಾನ ಪಾಯಿ ನೈನ ಮಾಂ ಪಾಲಿಯಲ ಮೇಲು ಜಯ ಮಂಗಳ ನಿತ್ಯ ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಳ ನಿತ್ಯ ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳ ಶರಣನ್ನ ದಾಸುಲ ಕುವರು ಮಿತ್ತು ನನಿ ಬಿರುದು ಧರಿಯಂಚಿಯುನ್ನ ಪರ ದೈವ ಮುನಕು ಶರಣನ್ನ ದಾಸುಲ ಕುವರ ಮಿತ್ತು ನನಿ ಬಿರುದು ಧರಿಯಂಚಿಯುನ್ನ ಪರ ದೈವ ಮುನಕು ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಳ ನಿತ್ಯ ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಳ ನಿತ್ಯ ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಳ ನಿತ್ಯ ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳ ನಿತ್ಯ ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳ ನಿತ್ಯ ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಲಿಸನಿಂಗ್